live, live, live on a Sunday, last minute live on a Sunday. Why? I don't know. Just kind of hanging out. I figured, what the heck? Let's go live. I also bought a new camera lens, so I wanted to see how it would do. I can't really tell any difference right now. Although this is a much longer lens. How's that? Is that good for everybody? Probably not. All right, we'll go back here. So, hey, Everyday Joe. Every, everyday Joe. What's up, everyone? Everyday Joe, it's just going to be, it's just me, you, and nine of, well, okay, never mind. It's 55 of our friends. <laughs> I was going to say it's just me, you, and nine of our friends, but now it's more. Good morning from Seattle. Good morning, Keith. That was some delicious coffee. It's got pleasure. What up, dog? Hey, look at all this. Lucas Roar Roar Roarbach. Hi. Love your I love you. I've never seen any of your videos. Yeah. What's up from Poland? Daniel Avila. You're my favorite Daniel Avila. Thank you, brother. Your sister is that Danielle? No, that's Daniel. <laughs> Switzerland. My brother's going to Switzerland this week. I think he might be there. It's past noon. Tony M. Past noon. Good evening. You know what's cool is on these live streams, I have so many people that join from the UK. It's awesome. Like there's a lot of folks that join from the UK. So very excited about that. Steve November brings his shit to the table. There we go. Coral Gables, Florida. Saiful Adam. Adam. Hey, hey to you. Hey, look at that. Wicket, triple nine. Sorry, just about the Sony SSC is five to downsize my Polk Studio 10. Love them so far in my for my office. Live live them so far from my office. So that's very cool. Hello from Moscow. Holy cow. West Palm Beach. Uh, Scott, you having a good morning? I am. I'm feeling a little bit better. I'm still not like 100%. And I might sniffle here and there, but I'm on the mend. I'm trying out a new lens. I found a... Okay. Maybe the autofocus isn't great. Anyway, I found a super good deal I on um, Polk TSI 100 speakers. And I'm like... I really should probably share this out because I know I talk about like the Sony's and I talk about even the ELAC BS 41s, um, the ammo S 801s, but I rarely talk about the Polk TSI 100s, which is an old speaker. Um, you can still get them new. So it's kind of like new old stock. I think the speaker came out in 2009. Let me see if I can pull it up here and, uh, show y'all what i'm talking about so anyway i posted it in my uh community section today and i'm like why don't i just go live real quick and we can talk about it and then just see how we're doing on a on a sunday morning it's easy like sunday morning oak nope sorry oak tsi andy let me share my screen. Present, share screen, share screen, screen two. There we go. All right, here we go. Um, yeah, these used to be like even almost two years ago. So I, I posted my original video from this, which is kind of funny. Um, really different style back then. I was really dry. Anyway, they were 150 back then, and now they're 100 bucks now. So, yeah, I mean, it's, it's a crazy deal. And if you need like a three channel on a budget, look at this thing, 188 bucks for these. Here, I'm going to, I'm going to link that in the description. All right. Uh, we don't want you to see that. All right. 
Hold on. Oh, I can't show you any of this stuff. Never mind. <laughs> Sorry. I was show, showing you be, behind the scenes. Here we go. I'll just post this here. Anyway, um, yeah. All right. Back to some comments. Uh, you use a Canon camera or Sony? I use a Sony. Um, it's an older Sony. I used to do stills, a little bit of stills work with my buddy. Um, so I have an A7R three. It's like three generations old now, but it refuses to die. I need more cheap Watchman contacts too. Well, I just got a couple more in. So some of that should be coming. Hit the like button, sillies. JBL 4345. Yeah, hit the like button if you can. If you can. TSI 300s are fantastic. I think I already read that. Look at TI, man. That's a man right there. Look like you just got done doing a tough mutter or something. Tough mutter. Um, one of my buddies just got the Monolith THX certified dual 10 inch sub. I can't wait to hear that sucker. Yeah, but it's beefy. Your video about the dark sides of reviewing really spoke to me. Oh, cool. I don't remember that one. Is that a live stream? Yeah, I think I took that down. That one stirred up a bit of controversy. That's the first live stream I think I've ever taken down. Yamo S809 on sale for 187. Very cool. Uh, the ABX audio file 499. Thank you, sir. Glad you're feeling better. Over here rocking a little steak and eggs and high res streaming this morning. Cheers, my friend. Loving all your advice. Thank you, man. There's some cherry pie for breakfast. I made a cherry pie and an apple pie. I think it was Friday night. Anyway, my daughter was like, I want some pie. Like, Let's go. <laughs> Let's go make some. Anyway, still haven't gotten through both of them, but they're over there. And then a buddy of mine made me a, a tri-tip. Very nice tri-tip. Uh, Rob Hawk, thirteen ninety nine Canadian. The world is full of interesting stuff. It certainly is, Rob. Uh oh, my we quit working uh, in my work system after the latest update. It won't let me use the guest Wi Fi now. Oh yeah, I think we've talked about this. Yeah, you're. I think you're locked down with the crazy work stuff. Reach out to them and see what they have. Weem. Uh, cherry is greater than apple pie. I agree. Most of the time. However, I like to cleanse my palate from cherry pie with a little apple pie and a little bit of caramel, some vanilla ice cream. That's what I like to do. Uh, Matt D, see you at Capital Audio Fest. Awesome. I'll see you at Capital Audio Fest. Make sure you flag me down and say, hey, I'm Matt D. You sound like one of the Beastie Boys. Um, what do you think on Optimus Mach 3 speakers? Uh, no, no is. I don't know them. Optimus Mach 3. I don't know them. Minimus was an old. Uh, that was an old realistic speaker. Nerd, $700 or so stand mounters. Any suggestions? I think you're, I think you mean need i look at the polk r200s um then i would look at uh elac b2 plus then i would look at um if you don't need something huge acoustic energy ae 100 i think mark ii uh, let's see wharfdale denton 80th they're really good too realistic optimus yeah man i've got i've got some minimus upstairs um they make good speakers man cherry pie plus tri-tip equals american dream complete i agree it was it's a nice night last night i like the tri-tip was so good i didn't even like eat potatoes or anything with i just ate the tri-tip because i tried to i helped him out with some receiver issues he's like he smokes meat and everything he's like hey come over for a tri-tip or come pick up a tri-tip so i did i'm hoping to go to capital audio fest or whatever it's called we'll see which got back from vacation Ooh, where'd you go david 
Focal Cora 806, 40% off right now. Whoa. I think I listened to them. They were a little bit bright for me. Um, they sounded really good, though. I mean, for about 30 minutes, but they got pretty bright. I think you could tame that down, though, because I think they were hooked up to like a name, a name amp. So anyway, our first stereo is a really realistic Radio Shack thing. Yeah, I got a whole bunch of um, realistic receivers. Uh, would love to see more reviews of vintage speakers gear, Cam. It's interesting you say that. I literally just got my Yamaha dropped off yesterday, the CR800. I think it was a 74, maybe a 75. 74, I think it was. So anyway, Skylabs Audio, he has a channel too. Great, great guy. Um, he said, send it to me and I'll fix it. I think he's going to do some videos with it. Um, as far as like the content and then maybe we might have like a little chit chat about um i don't know just vintage audio and stuff should be cool d wayne good afternoon have you listened to the hiko aura aurora 700 if so what are your thoughts no i haven't i haven't let uh, listen to those a lot of people have asked me to get those in but i haven't listened to them. you guys want to see my mug roswell new mexico Purchase this in Roswell, New Mexico. All right, this coffee is getting a little bit cold. My first DJ mixer was a realistic VU meters. Ooh, very nice, King Spartacus. All right. Got the hot coffee in here. Mm hmm. All right, I'm going to pour a little bit of that. Right, warm this one up. Put the lid back on here so we keep that one nice and warm. All right. Does the Sony XM5 fit your audio production? Or I have to buy real headphone. I don't know the XM5. Is that a wireless? I don't know, man. Shang Li, I'm sorry. I'm not familiar with that. One of the most popular, like, pro Sony headsets for, like, mixing and monitoring, I think it's the 7205. They're really bright though, but and lean, but a ton of people use it. It's got a fixed um, cord, but it's got like a 10 foot, like a telephone style cord. So yeah. Do you think Yamo is dumping prices for uh, in a prep for version two of the 803 series? Well, there is a new series that's been released. I think it's available only in Europe right now, and it may or may not even make it to the U S but it's a newer version and I think it's kind of positioned to be a successor to the S series, but I don't know if it'll ever come over. So it depends. Like, I don't know what Yamo is doing with clips, like in the pricing video I just did. The good news is that the Yamo pricing has stayed really stable and it stayed stable at their new lower prices. So I don't know. I wish I did know, but I don't know. Um, the only thing I do know is that, it's a good time to buy a Yamo. You're not going to feel like you're going to get ripped off. Okay, here we go. Oh, sorry. I mean the Sony WH-1000XM5 uh, wireless. So here's what I'll say about those. I had a pair of the th third generation, and their stock sound signature was really bassy. The cool thing is about those is they do have an EQ, so you could get them down to flat sounding so that you could do some mixing with them. The problem is, though, if you set it to flat, it's still like this super bassy sound signature. So you would have to somewhat kind of compare it to something that already sounds flat in, an or in order to do some type of mixing with it. So you definitely could use those to mix. The problem is you're going to have to, like, their stock signature is not neutral. So you have to kind of figure out what is neutral and then set an EQ that it sounds like neutral. Have you as yet looked into reviewing the Nob Sound All Tube 6P1? Interested in this one? It's interesting that you bring that up. So Duke Audio, no Noob Sound, Nob Sound, Knob Sound are the same company. And they reached out to me and said, Hey, we want to work with you. And like literally anything you want, we will send you. 
So I, I don't know the line very well, but one of my patrons, John S., otherwise known as Father Roctopus, does know that line really well. So I sent him the email and I said, hey, just pick out what you think would be good and then I'll send them, I'll send them that request to get those in. So oops, I'm going to write this model number down. Uh, six, six P one knob sound, and I can get that in and then we'll re review it for you. Yeah. 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 And thank you for the super chat, my friend, uh, Robert Richard. Let's see if I missed any. Hey there, Simon, Simon Hackshaw. Good day, Randy. Good to see you on a Sunday. Just got a vintage pioneer GR triple seven equalizer Ooh. and Morant's MA 500 U monoblock and to complete my near field listing setup take care and stay well sir Ooh, simon it's got some vintage going yeah i need to do a vintage video i need to i well definitely the um the yamaha my my newly i wouldn't say fixed but my newly loved yamaha is gonna get a video for sure from my buddy over at skylabs audio dun, dun, dun. here we go Shang Li, uh, Scott's talking. I would recommend the K361 or 371 or the Sony. I would go with the 361, but that's a great idea. Um, 361s are more neutral. There you go. Uh, sure, SRH 440 is pretty okay for mixing. Cool. Nope, sound G5 sub amp is a killer. Old now, but still has a punch. That's the cool thing about amps, though, is like, why like if they're good like just leave them alone right and just keep selling them so yeah what's your take on the jbl stage a130 bookshelf speakers i love them love them love them if you go back and look at a lot of my like sub 200 dollar, sub 300 dollar video comparisons stage a130s are in there actually i think i have a pair right there see that white one uh, to the, it'd be the right of the Mandalorian. Those are new camera. Those are the stage. A, yeah. Those are the stage A130s. Anyway, they're right back there. The white woofer. I love them. A lot of myself. JBL's never sent me anything. Love, love, love those speakers. Uh, pretty neutral, uh, but they sound stage and image really, really well. Here we go. This is the one I was talking about. The Sony MDR 7506 is the model you're thinking of for corded studio monitor headphones. Very, very highly regarded. Yeah, it's really ubiquitous, I think, in the um, recording industry, that and the uh, Audio Technica. Um, very, very ubiquitous. They're everywhere. IEMA AO7 is on sale on Walmart for $63.99. I've never bought anything from Walmart that's not like from Walmart. You know what I mean? Sorry, I don't know what those are. I dropped out of Hi-Fi for 20 plus years and I'm just getting back. I don't know which one that is, what you're referring to. Uh, hey, I've just hooked up my new IEMA T9. Thank you for the recommendation. How do you like uh, to set bass and treble on that amp? It's really dependent on the source material and then the speakers. Um, I just have a certain sound that I like to go after. And so I set it accordingly. So... Unfortunately, I don't think there's like any right answer for that. It's going to be right for you and then right for your speakers and then right for your room and then right for your so source material too. That's a cool thing though, right? <laughs> not to say right so many times, but you get to dial it in exactly how you want to and not like how they think you should. So that's why I love tone controls and EQ. Andrew Reister, $4 super sticker. Holla. Look at that. It's a tattoo of a smoothie. A happy smoothie. Thank you, Andrew. All right. Tim at Bennett, 200, some type of currency. Oh, 200 rupees. Should be enough for a coffee. Thank you. Tim, uh, have you heard of the Aris Audify streamer? If so, thoughts. I have not. Tim, I have not heard that. I had something in here the other day, but I don't think it was that one. 
So no, I haven't heard it, brother, but I appreciate um, you supporting the channel. Daniel Carlson was up. Hey, have you guys seen um, it's on Netflix called Blockbuster? It's a really cute comedy about the last Blockbuster. And it's like totally my generation. So most of the characters are, are in their 40s. And it's such a funny show. And anyway, um, the main character and then one of his buddies always go, what's up? Um, anyway. <laughs> Sorry, I'm still not 100%. But anyway, Blockbuster on Netflix. I just started watching it on a lark last night, and um, it's great. I love it. It's really light, though, so I don't think it's going to be like anything really, really crazy or well-written. Well it's just kind of funny. Have you heard the RSL speed woofer tens? I have not. I've never had anything in from RSL or RHEL or any of those guys. Hobby Talk says Blockbuster is a great show. It is. Hmm. Scott, cost would be great for mixing if you're in a quiet environment. There you go. What if you just run one sub? Does it behave the same way? Oh, you guys must be talking in the comments. All right, someone managed to get a different type of font. I have a Crown XLS 502 pushing two 10-inch subs. Amp clips at just over half power. Any thoughts? Um, um, well, if you're controlling power on the amp, then you're controlling gain. And oftentimes you cannot like max out gain. So what you're really doing is you're matching the, um, the source, the gain on the amp to the source. So you still may be getting like max power out of it, you know, matched to your source or whatever is driving the variable input into the crown. But that's a really, it's really a gain setting. So it's not uncommon at all to have clipping on an amplifier using the gain setting when you're not cranked all the way to the top. So it's not a volume knob, it's a gain knob. And that's really meant to match with the input voltage. What you could do is go in there and play with the input voltage and see if you can get a higher input voltage. That's going to get a higher SPL. If that makes sense. But yeah, it's like how one would set, <clears throat> sorry, one would set the gain on a, like a, car audio amplifier what you're really doing is you're setting it to the source at a specific voltage and then you're getting it to clip and then you're bringing it right back down just underneath clipping and then that is your gain now your gain is set and then the volume is controlled through the source <clears throat> shang li shang li and scott are chit-chatting i like this Acoustic Energy AE100 Mark II for two thirty dollars. What do you think about it in this price category? I think it's outstanding. Like Acoustic Energy in Europe, like is a great, great, great way to uh, uh, get those speakers. Because even at five hundred dollars, that's iffy at five hundred dollars, but at two thirty, no problem. King Spartacus gain is trim, not volume. Yeah, I think we're talking about the same thing. Like gain is not volume. Uh, it's difficult to match gain by ear. Yes, but those crowns have clipping um, things on them. So what you can do is turn up the source to the level that you think you're never going to exceed and then turn up the gain on the crown until it starts to clip and then bring it back a little bit with some dynamic music or you could run a test tone, bring it up to where it clips and then pop it down and then you'll never have to worry about it clipping. At least that's what I used to do on car audio. <clears throat> Check phase and impedance of equipment. Base requires power. All right. We're going to go back up here. Got a lot of cool questions. Uh, you'll need to know your headphones regardless of brand. I just, just to mix on cost port pro back in the days. Yeah, okay. I think we're talking about, it. that's a good point. Like if you understand how your headphones compare to other headphones and what that other headphone 
frequency response is like, you can kind of mix on anything, right? But you just have to, you just have to know yourself. I swear to God, I'm going to take this. I've got a little handle down here on my desk, and I always hit it. Oh, there's the dog. All right. I went to the local audio store and picked up RP600M Mark II for 450 Heard them next to Dyn Audio, Emit 10, and Focal 806, and it was an easy choice, surprisingly. Cool. Very cool. All right. Okay, nice. Uh, what's your preference for a low-budget DAC amp to pair with the Sony SSCS5 speakers? Is it the IEMA T9? Seems like a really good buy. Yes, the T9, the DO3 from IEMA as well is really good. There's a Duke audio version of it. Um, there is a Fozzy audio that I think has a TPA or a Texas, a Texas instrument chip. That's pretty good. It's a Pomeranian. I want to hang free range Pomeranians, but this is the time when things get delivered. So she goes bananas this time. Sounds like a Yorkie. Yeah. Looks like a Yorkie. Um, Sith Doggio. Sam. Sam wins. That's the joke of the day right there. Sith Doggio. Hey, Mr. Cochran. Mark is a C9 twin, and I think it would be a great match for the Sonys. For the love of goodness. Hold on. Let me yell at the, yell at the dog. Here. How do I mute myself? Sorry, it didn't work. Yelling at the dog doesn't work. Ah, uh, both preamp and amp have tone controls. Set pre to 12 o'clock and adjust with amp. Maybe the opposite, all full. No, I would set the preamp to 75%, and then I would do the gain until it clips, and then bring it back, and then be done with it. Uh, daily connection issues with ZenStream. <laughs> Any good alternatives with USB or I2, uh, I squared S or 2S you can recommend? Um, let's see. USB, like a streamer with USB out? I mean, I would optical out with USB or over USB because of clocking considerations. Um, I squared S, no. I, I really don't play with streamers that have that I squared S because that's kind of like a, a, a tier above what I play with. And frankly, I think that connection is just a more expensive thing that people can say, well, we have this so we can charge more. I don't think there's any like um, performance upgrades with it. They claim there is, and they claim it has to do with clocking because you can have multiple clocking uh, channels with the I squared S because it's like an HDMI. So it's like an HDMI footprint, but it's not HDMI, obviously. But you can have more of the wires or channels associated with clocking. The funny thing is, though, if you just use optical, like most DAC chips have reclocking in the chip itself. So you don't have to worry about reclocking or any of the issues that supposedly the I squared S fixes. Um, so it's a long way of saying, no, I don't. But I'm sorry about the Zen stream. I had the exact same experience with it. Um, you can try hardwiring it if you can. Um, but yeah, I mean, I go like I'm pretty, pretty low end when it comes to streamers. I like the Wii Mini. I like Blue Sound, but I don't know if Blue Sound, Blue Sound has an optical out. Blue Sound's really solid but not usb or i squared s or i2s whatever it is all right leave it on the zen stream have i ever built speakers without using crossover i had a, a junior high send me a full range driver speaker that sounded pretty good it obviously had no crossover because there's a full range crossover um 
if you're going to use two drivers in theory, I mean, in practice, you don't have to use a crossover at all, but with a woofer, when it starts to roll off on top, it starts to break up generally speaking. And so that breakup, even if you match it with a tweeter um, that has similar sensitivity, that breakup is going to sum with some of the tweeter frequency or uh, levels as it rolls off. So there's going to be a huge, there's going to be huge spikes at the crossover point, which generally is not a g- good thing. Was gifted five Magna Planar speakers system. Magna Plane speaker system. Good amp for this. Something that's got a lot of juice. Um, any plans to review the mini DSP flex? No, I took a look at it. Um, and personally, from like my standpoint, I would love to get my hands on that thing and just play around with it. But I don't know how ap- applicable it will be to a lot of folks because I just think it's going to be outside the comfort level of a lot of folks as far as like tweaking goes. So while I am interested in it personally, I don't know how much relevance it would have to the widest audience, if that makes sense. But yeah, for sure. I would love to look at that. Hopefully Fozzie Audio will reply to my email about sellers in India. I want to buy your recommended amp and then perhaps build a basic box speaker set. That's cool. I hope they reply to you too, man. This dog. Pearl acoustic speakers don't have crossover. Yeah. There's some people that don't have crossovers. And um, if it sounds great to them, then it sounds great to them. And if people like the way that sounds, awesome. I'm just saying like most designers put a crossover in there to mitigate or eliminate the, um, the breakups on both drivers. If that makes sense. Victor Petrov, uh, BGN 20. Hey, Randy, any plans on reviewing vintage gear and speakers, budget stuff like old EPOS quad acoustic energy, Keep up the good work. Been watching you since the start. Thank you, Victor. I have a few what I would call vintage videos out there. None of the brands that you're talking about, unfortunately. but And no vintage speakers. I've never done a vintage speaker review. Although I do have some realistic minimus speakers, which would be considered vintage. So I do need to do some more vintage vintage videos but i haven't um, done any any of those brands unfortunately um and thank you victor by the way for the support of the channel um d wayne how do you feel about the jbl studio 5 series floor standing speakers what would you consider as a comparable speaker Uh, i don't have any experience with them i did have the jbl studio 530s i think that's it They were a two-way bookshelf speaker. I thought they were very neutral, um, a little bit thin for my personal taste, and a little bit forward in the mid-range. But people love that speaker. And I think um, uh, something that's comparable would be something that's very neutral, I imagine. But again, I don't have any experience with the 5 Series floor standing speaker. But it's got a great reputation and people love, love, love it. Um, so I couldn't compare it to anything, unfortunately. But thank you so much, man, for the support of the channel. Daniel Woodard, $5. Thank you. Thank you very much. Hold on. I got to mute myself. Sorry. Not quite 100%. Health wise, I'm getting there though. I'm getting there. A couple more days. What is that boom box back there? Um, that is, oh, I think that's a Jensen. One of my patrons sent that to me, and it's so it's in such great condition. I'll probably never use it, but I just, um, I love having stuff like that on the shelf. I love it. BGN. 
is Bulgarian. 50 cents USC per lev. Wow. That's awesome. Very cool. From Victor. Um, Rainy, have you ever heard the Adam Audio T5Vs? I have not. Um, Ambient Wanderer. Hey, man. I have not. <coughs> but people love them. People love them. Entry-level LDAC Bluetooth adapter, please suggest. Ooh, this is a tough question. And I'm going to say, like, I wouldn't get an entry-level LDAC Bluetooth adapter. What I would get is the Wii Mini. Especially if you have an Apple device, because then you can airplay to it. But I know that Zen, Zen Blue is LDAC. I wouldn't consider it to be entry-level, though. And it's about two times to three times more expensive than the Wii Mini. So I would go with the Wii Mini and then either stream with it or use AirPlay with it um, because you're going to get better, better sound, higher quality sound through it versus L. Even though it's LDAC, LDAC Bluetooth is good, um, but it's not it's not uh, lossless. <laughs> All right, what are the pros and cons of modding the Sony SSCS5 versus using an equalizer? Okay, so one of the pros is going to be when you switch out the inductor on the base circuit, you're actually lowering, lowering the resistance. So therefore, you're increasing the amount of base. You're also cleaning it up. So the thing that you would get between, you know, adjusting simply the frequency response or actually changing some parts is going to be cleanliness. It's going to be instrument separation and overall quality. Really the con of modding the Sony SSC is five is it's difficult to get the, the original crossover board out of there. It's difficult to get the ring around there off. Although I've done it a few times, I've never cracked one yet. Um, and since it's three speakers in there, it's, I wouldn't call it a difficult mod, but it's more difficult than obviously if you just had two drivers in there. So, um, but that modded Sony, if you're using um, Neil's plans is really amazing what you can get out of that speaker. He also has a mod for, the BS41 from ELAC. And that's an easier mod. It's a cheaper mod. Um, and you might want to look at that one too. Hmm. Zach Keith. Normally use Bluetooth to my IEMA A3. Would I gain anything getting a Wii Mini? Don't fully understand the streamers. Zach, yes, absolutely. Absolutely. Because what you're getting with a streamer is it's getting the information directly from the internet. So you are legitimately streaming straight from the internet. So it would be similar or analogous to having a computer hardwired into your DAC because your computer is lossless. So a streamer most would be lossless. So you're not having any of the compression issues of Bluetooth and even AirPlay and like Chromecast or something like that. And then fundamentally you would use your phone or another device to control the actual stream. So you're not actually using your phone to stream, which is what you'd be using if you're doing Bluetooth or AirPlay. So it'd be going phone and then a signal going into the streamer. Whereas a streamer is actually just getting the info directly from the internet. So something like that. All right. Going to go to Keith. What's the best way for us to suggest topics for you to cover? Um, Keith, I don't know if you're a patron, but patrons make a lot of suggestions. Um, and sometimes I go to them. Like we do kind of a video together. So I'll bring up a topic and then I'll get feedback from them. And I do videos that way. But for like a straight up video, like here's my idea for a video. Usually it's going to patrons i get a lot of emails and i don't have an opportunity to answer all of them and so i got i get a lot of emails from manufacturers and then i get a lot of emails from 
like people that are sponsoring the videos, like uh, established titles, Squarespace and stuff like that. So I don't have time to go like through all the emails that I get, but that's, that's the best way It's through my Patreon because I do answer all those messages at least once a week. Georgia, Gorg, Gorgie, 1984. Ooh, look at that one-line diagram. Super sticker, 499. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you, thank you very much. All right. Ashley J. Williams, hand, $5. Mid-rise condo, hardwood floors, vinyl CD, CACD, DVDA, tape, high-res stream, hi-fi speaker, Tips picks for apartment condo dwellers concerned about base and neighbors. Um, headphones. <laughs> I'm sorry. I know I say that kind of as a joke, but not really as a joke because you're going to be able to like enjoy the most out of your music without making any compromises with headphones. With that said, I would go, <clears throat> I would go with <clears throat> a decent stand mount speaker or bookshelf speaker. Uh, let's see. Vinyl uh, depends on your budget, but I go with the Fluence RT 83, 84, 85 CD. Um, I would get a probably a high res blu-ray player for about 150 bucks that's going to handle all that tape you you're going to have to worry about like whatever you can find on the secondary market although morantz makes like a pro tape deck for about 150 bucks high res streamer would be the weem mini so yeah that's what i would do uh what webcam do you use to shoot your videos uh not a webcam it's a sony a7r3 look at that um it's just a camera like a um dslr no it's not a dsl yeah it's a digital yeah sony i've had it for years refuses to break i was looking at new cameras with a buddy but um just bought a new lens instead I actually traded in two old lenses to get this and then uh some microphones so yeah mark for long, narrow room, try orienting your system diagonally to confuse the reflections. Reflections. I have a similar room, and it works pretty well in lieu of putting acoustic treatments on the sides. There you go. Mark is our resident um, budget acoustic engineer. He is awesome. He is in uh, a regular contributor in my Patreon. He's been around for a long time. And knows so how to get like great sound on a budget making room treatments from like towels and stuff like that. Mark is awesome. I love Mark. Love you, Mark. Mirrorless. ILC. I don't know what that is. Yeah, this is a mirrorless camera. Um, there you go. Any experience with the current mission? No, 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 no. I don't have any experience with the mission. I think John Darko's got a bunch of videos out about the mission. I think Andrew Robinson did one as well. I think they're well regarded. Don't use a big subwoofer and you'll be fine with the neighbors. I am lucky to live in a neighborhood that likes music on the weekends. Very good. Anyone see the review of the $800 audio file network switch on Linus Tech Tips? I did. <laughs> It's funny, funny. That's a kind of a funny video, man. Because they took a D link, like a $30 D link network switch, and then just went in and covered up a bunch of stuff with like, I don't know, computer goo or whatever it is, and then stamped their logos all over it. And then they did a blind test, and like nobody could tell the difference. Like few people could tell the difference, but like I don't even know if they chose it correctly. The answer was or the question was, can you tell the difference? Not is one better than the other, and very few people said they could tell the difference. Very hot. Oh, favorite mini amp with an internal power supply. 
Uh, I think the IEMA A300 is pretty good. It's got an internal power supply. The A08, pretty good. Internal power supply. Um, DA9 from SMSL, internal power supply. It's pretty good. Yeah. <laughs> Those little Illuminati stickers all over the inside was insane. Yeah. Yeah. It's a that's a cool video. I like Linus a lot. Um a lot. Matt uh Mark got a heart and a emoji. Um best way to secure bookshelf to stand, please. Uh I just put a little blue tech. I have isoacoustic little stands on mine. So I don't really secure them. I know some people like uh, Q Acoustics, like that gr gray speaker right there. They actually have stands that you can screw into the bottom. Some speakers do have like threaded inserts, so you could screw them to a stand. Um, I would recommend putting something in between it, some type of rubber, uh, so it's not like hard surface on hard surface. But there's a couple of ways. I personally don't secure them to stands unless they kind of have matching stands and stuff. I have a Denifrep's Pontus, which goes straight into my pimped A07. Um, sounds great. Need to change volume via remote. Well, adding a preamp changed the sound. It can. The problem is, is like you don't know until you know, because a preamp sound really different. And actually, I think a lot of the differences in sounds when it comes to amplifiers are actually happening in the preamp instead of like in the amplifier itself. So like, let's take some like the Schitt Saga, I think is really kind of a straight through type of a sound. So it's, I don't think it's really coloring it. If anything, sometimes it's, it sounds a bit, I wouldn't say thin, but clean, clean, clean. And the fray is the same way from Schitt. Then you have something like the PT2, which I think, I wouldn't say warms it up a little bit, but there's it feels more dynamic than some of the Schitt products. Then you have something like the Macintosh C15, which is a vintage, and man, it's just thick and warm and not a lot of detail but there's a definite kind of like romanticism about the sound um so the short answer to your question is yes it absolutely can change the sound but something like the saga which is 300 dollars, you do get a remote you get uh um really good volume control on it i think that might be something to start with if you're in the u.s <clears throat> which I don't know if you are in the U.S. Um, and then you can also just get, um, I think, some cheaper preamps. So, yeah. Oops. All right. We're popping all over the place. Uh, what speakers do you find yourself using the most? Oh, uh, Sony SSCS5s probably is like the very easy answer. Um, I used to use those all the time for near field listening. And for like electronics evaluation, and it kind of goes back to the headphone thing. Like I would use them because I knew them so well. I've been using the B2 Plus from Emotiva like a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot. I just put the Pinnacle Prime Pinnacle Towers upstairs yesterday um, for home theater. And then I'm going to do, you know, music listening, but they just went upstairs. But Right now, I have the Acoustic Energy AE100 Mark IIs right here, but usually it's the Sony's um, Wharfdale Denton 80 at the beginning a lot of time. Acoustic Energy has been getting a lot of time, and the B2 Plus from Emotiva has been getting the most time. Out of those, all those speakers, I think the B2 Plus from Emotiva and the Sony's are probably like my most used speaker at this point. Andy at BRMW, $10. Thank you. Look at that crest, that rooster. Thanks, Randy. Have a good cup of coffee on me. I recommend some MCT turmeric 
in it for your health. Thank you. I need I need some man. I need to get I need to be 100 percent for Capital Audio Fest here this week, which is Thursday. Yay! Christian, what site? Russell Perry, is there any real difference in the sound of DAX since they use the same chipset? Absolutely. The sound from DAX has nothing to do with the chipset per se. There are certain characteristics um, of certain chipsets if they're implemented the same way. And a lot of the Chinese designs are just a retread of the same implementation. Just what they do is they just throw the new DAC chip in there. They're like, hey, new DAC. So it's the same implementation, though. And so it's the same implementation. It's the same analog output stage. And that's really, I think, where most of the sound differences in DACs comes from. So the DAC chips, I think, play less of a role in the sound signature than the actual analog output stage. So, yeah. Yep, yep, yep. You can have the same DAC chipset, and those DACs can sound completely different. The best example of that is the Gishelli Labs um j2 the akm um one sounds completely different from any of the new akm 4493s chipsets and this is not the s chipset from the 4493s chipset i say s is for siblings and it's not necessarily because it's a bad dac chip it's because the implementation is bad um and the implementation is just a copy and paste from like so if it's an smsl a topping uh, Gustard, um, any of those, I think, are copying and pasting a lot of the same implementation. So those DACs almost sound like exactly the same. Um, if you get into some of the R2R stuff and then the Gishelli Lab stuff, then you can start hearing some major difference. The exception to that is probably the topping PA5. PA5, no, that's an amp. The topping E50. Topping E50, I think, utilize the different output stage and it's a much better sounding DAC to my ears to my ears um if that makes sense uh jim swenson hope you're feeling better enjoy some coffee i feel fine you know i don't feel bad it's just the sinus and my voice and stuff so i'm a little bit tired a little bit tired but it doesn't keep me from having a good time with you guys on a on a sunday after, after right after uh daylight savings times yeah but thank you, Jim. I really appreciate it. Hey, Rainy, I can tell how much your videos have helped me to decipher the world of audio. Thank you for everything you do. Thomas, thank you for watching. I'm glad that I can help. Um, glad I can help. Uh, what would you replace first when upgrading from $100 to $400 gear? Streamer or DAC? Uh, DAC. Um, because if like, there's two schools of thought on like upgrades, one is at the, the last part before it hits you. So that's the speakers, right? And then the other school of thought is the source, because if you get the source, right, you have a great source, then that's going to bleed through every step of the way. Like if you have a, not a bad source, but a source that as, isn't quite as good as some other sources then you're starting off with kind of a picture that has a little bit of, you know, a picture that's not quite as sharp. So even though that picture that's not as sharp is coming through the whole chain. Now, if you have a speaker that's not very good, it doesn't matter how sharp that source is. It's going to kind of get filtered because that's the last filter before it hits your ears. So a lot of people say start with the speakers, get something that you like, and then start with the source and kind of, that's what I would do um, is if you have a set of speakers that you like, then definitely go with the DAC streamer. I think you can get improvements with streamers, especially if the power supply is implemented well, but not as much as a good DAC. If that makes sense. Whew. I'm new to good audio, so I don't know what to expect yet and how good my system is. If you're enjoying it, that's all that matters. You can start adding things in later. But one of the cool things about this hobby is it's not a, it's not a, I get into it and I'm done. Like I get a system and I'm done. 
most of the people like the journey. And sometimes that journey is 50 years, 60, 70 years, you know, of, you know, listening and enjoying and experiencing and things like that. So it can be a fairly short journey. If you kind of come in here and you're like, okay, Randy says, get this, 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 and this, I get it. And yeah, it sounds good to me. So you can kind of be done. But most of the people that, you know, are in my community, you know, have years of experience and it's, the journey is just as much uh, as it. Sometimes it's almost funner, the journey than the destination. But um, if there's no like replacement for experience. So the, the experience part is the stuff like be happy, man. Like you're the beginning of it and everything can be like, it's like a new discovery every time you, you start to uh, upgrade or change or things like that. Uh, hearing changes with the age too, lifelong journey. That's right. That's right. I, I will say this though. I mean, I, I worked on a farm in an, and in an industrial environment in the Navy, and then also an industrial environment after I got out of the Navy uh, with a lot of rotating machinery and things like that. So those type of environments are, can really be detrimental to one's hearing. However, what I will say is, as you listen more and more intently, it's not that your hearing gets better, but your brain is able to use the information that you're getting to hear more. So it's like you're training your brain how to listen more. So even though people may have hearing loss at certain points, you can still like pick out and decipher different things in speakers because your brain has gotten better about processing the information that you give it. So yeah, our hearing does change with age for sure, but I'm more sensitive now to 1800 for like 1500 to 2500 Hertz. I'm more sensitive now at my age of 46 and working in all those environments than I was before. Like when I was 20 years younger, way more. Like I, I was setting up a home theater last night and I'm like, Oh God, this is hot. And I had just run Dirac. So according to Dirac, my listing position was a flat, like there was no bumps or, 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 or pops or anything, but I still like 2k was so hot that I brought it down on the center speaker. I brought it down on the front speakers because it was just too much. Um, and so even like in theory, I should have been hearing like perfect flat frequency response. It was still too much for me. So, Yeah. <clears throat> Scott Pledger. Thanks, Randy. I'm going to drop off, but I'll see you tonight on the Zoom. Thank you, Scott. Really appreciate you being here and supporting the channel. Scott's another longtime patron of the channel. Um, yeah. All right. We're getting to about an hour. Um, any quick questions or anything like that? I know there's a lot of questions. I didn't get to them all, and I apologize for that, but I got to keep these things fairly short because I've got kids and the weekends are tough i was really excited my my youngest is at her grandmother's and my um two older daughters are kind of doing their own thing so i had some time today so i figured what the heck and it really came from like seeing the polk tsi 100 i'm like 100 i need to share this out because that is a really good speaker uh for 100 bucks yeah only fallen angels get views to talk about zero useful information. I don't know what that means. Uh, Polk ES20 versus Wharfdale Diamond 12.2, which, what would you prefer? Hmm. Okay, I'm, I think the Wharfdale Diamond 12.2 is going to be the more, what some people would consider audiophile speaker, but the ES20 is going to be the funner speaker for most people. So it depends on where you're at in your journey. If you listen to a lot of acoustic um, music, a lot of maybe orchestral, symphonic, probably the Wharfdale. If you're more into rock and roll, probably the uh, Polk ES20. <clears throat> ah, Daniel, I'm loving it, Randy. Getting into music again and having so much fun finding new songs. Amazed at how good it sounds. Super satisfied with the DIY part two. These speakers will never be sold. Very good. I'm assuming you built a set of speakers. 
which um, is so much fun. And there's so much pride. Actually, you know what I might do? I got a pair of the CSS Tory in. Um, we had talked about, so I did a review on the C new CSS Tory, which is a kit, the new affordable kit from, uh, from CSS Audio. And we had talked there because they don't have an affiliate thing, but you know, after the video, there's a, a few of those sets were sold and we were talking about, Hey, how do you want to handle this? Do you want us to create a affiliate? And I'm like, no, nah, just send me a pair. Um, cause they were going to let me keep the, the finished pair. And I'm like, no, I want to build, I want to build them again. It's been a long time since I built a kit. So I figured, yeah, I'm going to have some fun and I'm not going to like push myself to get it done in a certain amount of time. I'm just going to really enjoy it. Take my time and then take a lot of time with the finishing of it as well. Just have a good time. So I might glue up the, um, might glue up the enclosures today and start working on the crossovers. It's going to be fun. Human intelligence is a hoax. Liberty Aid Academy is popping in here with some con con contra controversy. Um, hey, Randy, would you consider doing more shows about upgrading exi existing equipment, i.e. capacitor, cabling, tube, or op-amp upgrades? Yes, I have done a few, and there's more coming. I'm going to do one, kind of do a teardown of the BS41 from ELAC, show the crossover board and things like that, and then talk about Neil's upgrade path and maybe what you can do. Um, cables, I do have a bunch of audio quest stuff in. I do have a plan or an idea for um, a review or a video where I'm going to have my son because I have two of the same amplifiers. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hook up the audio quest power cable into the audio quest power conditioner on one. And then I'm going to leave the other one with a stock cable. And then I have a preamp that has uh, amp A and amp B. And then I'm going to run those into a switch. And so I'm going to be, I'm going to have my son switch back and forth between basically stock power cable and then audio quest power cable and audio quest power conditioner. And then I'm going to see if I can tell a difference. Um, because I do like audio quest stuff, the lower price stuff, just from a, a, um, like build quality perspective, but like, talking about whether or not this sounds better than the other is another thing. And I like want to put myself to the test. And so I want to see if I can hear the difference. So I'm really excited about that video. It's going to take a little while to do though, from a production standpoint, but I'm really excited about that video to see, Hey, I'm going to, you know, put my money where my mouth is and see if I can tell a difference. Uh, Christian, <clears throat> Thanks as always, man. Suggest a good cheap power amp or AVR for TA100. Um, well, I I mean, I would first look at the A2 or the A1 monoblocks. That's not cheap, though. The TA100 is a really good sounding amp to begin with um, in there. I don't know if cheap, like if you go cheap, I don't think you're going to do better. Uh, for the TA100. I think that's the question. TA100 is an integrated amp, right? I don't know. Am I missing something on that question? Ooh. My Wii Mini just arrived. Are there any SMSL or topping stacks which include both digital and several analog inputs? <clears throat> digital, yes. Analog, no. Usually you only get one analog with the stacks um, you can put like an external analog switcher in there that will add some more analog um, devices um, or the capability to run more analog, but you're adding something in. Um, so unfortunately, no, most of the topping SMSL stuff is really digital focused as far as inputs and not really analog focused at all. Uh, any good room calibration app uh, in most AVR receivers, you have their version of a room calibration um, on pioneer. It's called M CAC or something like that on Denon and Marantz. It's called Odyssey. And then there are more and more uh, receivers that are implementing DRAC. Um, let's see. Bucard has their own version 
I bet that's also a $3,000 integrated amp though. Um, and then you can actually get external DRAC modules um, or you can get mini DSP. Um, that's not as much of a kind of let the device calibrate. That's going to be up to you to calibrate it. And then you can get an external microphone run RU, R-E-W, which is a free download. But then you're going to have to take that info and then put it into the mini DSP and kind of do that on your own. If you're like a power user, or real tech head, that's a cool way and fun way to do it. But yeah, there's a lot of room correction softwares in there um, in almost every AVR, <coughs> even the more affordable one. A fair point. It's to dedicate it as a preamp. Yeah. So with that one, I, I think you're gonna have to spend some bucks and like the A2 from Emotiva, I think is around $500. I, I would say that's probably the lowest you'd want to go to get in a somewhat of an appreciable difference in sound quality. Like anything below that, I don't necessarily think you're going to hear a big difference because the amp that's in the TA100 is already a solid amp. So yeah, unfortunately, or, or fortunately, you have a really good amp already. Um, if you really want some some blazing power you can look at something like the crown but i think the crown's going to have a little bit of a thinner sound signature you do have tone controls on the ta100 though so you can mess around with that those crowns come in i think they start around 350 or so but then you have the a2 which is around 500 dollars, and then um, a few others to look at you can look at the vidar but the vidar is up there in price a bit um so yeah more expensive than the a2 all right, I think we're going to call it, gents. Uh, we've been at this for an hour and six minutes. So I appreciate y'all stopping by on a Sunday, kind of an impromptu live stream. This was a lot of fun. Here, I got to get a, a thumbnail. All right, so we're at the 107 point. All right, I'm going to use that as the thumbnail. Uh, do I listen near field or mid far field most of the time? For electronics, like evaluation, near field, almost always. Um, when I'm watching movies, it's mid or far field. Um, but I, I do all the testing kind of in all situations. Mo most of my time is spent in the near field, though, to really kind of lean in and hear, hear the differences. I think it's easier. You have less interaction with the room when you're near field. So I feel like I'm hearing more of that speaker or the device, you know, when I'm in the near field, if that makes sense. Billy. See you later. All right, gents. Y'all have uh, ladies and gents, or if there's any ladies in here, y'all have a great day. Have a great uh, rest of your Sunday and have a great week next week. All right. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye, -bye. Bye.